Here's a little shot of our spot. And it's busy up here this weekend. Well, you better re record that. And And here's our spot. With, there's my grill, our picnic table. We've got our towels drying there. There's a tent. And the old S10. Flying the flag. Something I picked up on going camping and I've stuck with it. I like it. I found us some wood. Loaded some up back there in the truck. The flag draped over here. Some charcoal, all the goodies that we need. We gotta cut all that mess out of there. Jack, just in case. We're good to go for a couple days. Neglecting my nether bugs. I was always prepared for this. Always prepped and ready to go. What's in your care package there? Let's see, got the tripod as you can see. Monopod. Good old bat light. And it's named appropriately, ain't it? <laughs> That's the beamer. Oh man. I think it's like 1400 luminous. With fresh batteries. This pretty bit dangerous. Yep. Copper. Something else. Who knows what? Never know what you might run into. Bobcat. Who knows what could happen. And when I'm in the woods, it goes on my belt. Doing you no good in the backpack you can't get to. Shotgun shells and a bandolier Cotton stands and dirty boots I brought it out my last good time Like a sin, spit it out Walk out of spirit in this fucking mess
Don't forget Mama Bear. Is that all right, Mama Bear? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's perfectly that fine. Works. Mama okay. Bear, Mrs. Bear, yeah. whichever. <laughs> I saw your singing too, by the way. You're awesome. I loved it. Bless you. I liked your service too. Bless you. Great. It was a good day. But yeah, we're going to uh, talk about some stuff on Sasquatch. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to go out here sometime and see what we can get. We'll take a little trip out the road and see if we can get what we got. Uh, that or more, uh, what we got last month. Uh, he was up here for the uh, big organization uh, with Mr. Waller. And uh, we had, uh, I did a howl, and within two to three minutes, uh, the big male came in and stomped his foot yeah. and kind of did a growl. I didn't and know. I went over and, and uh, he did another call. Uh, it's kind of a warning, warning call for him. Uh, usually the big males do it to let them know that don't don't come closer. <laughs> we're not gonna we're not gonna tolerate that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, he ended up just going outside in along the, the little swampy area that was right next to where we were camped and walked down and walked across the road beyond the gate and then came up and did a low guttural whoop and then the female answered from out the road answered him and they, they hung around for I don't know probably half an hour 45 minutes yeah they sure did and uh, you'd hear them walking around and every once in a while they would uh, do some of their clicking or chirps or whatever you would have liked to call yeah. and uh, they were what 12, maybe 15 people up there in the campground that night. Yes. Everybody was going, well, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you just don't get excited. It's yeah. funny because last night, I I was half asleep, but I was like, what's that clicking? Mm -hmm. And it was like, and I didn't know what it was. I just went back to sleep. <laughs> well, they'll, they'll, they'll click and they'll pop their teeth. You know, the males will tend to do a lot of more, you know, Before that, everything they do is kind of deep. I was gathering wood in mm -hmm. the fire pit. I was shining my light around, you know, looking for a dead fall and whatever. Well, I kind of see my shine. And I mean, it was just straight forward facing like I shine. And the way it was moving around, I was thinking, man, I, swear, I think that might have been a few days. Took the light off of that house I was. Well, I couldn't tell you for sure. It probably at least three or four feet. I was back a good ways from here to maybe that first camper in front of your truck. Mm hmm. Pretty good distance. So I took the light off of it. And I still kind of seen that greenish glow, but when I hit it with the light, man, it really lit up. Yeah. So I went back to for more wood shine the light again, it was kind of in a different spot, it was more of a greenish yellow look this time. I thought, man, that, that's probably one of them, I just got out of there. Yo, deer don't have that greenish yellow color. <laughs> yeah. He came yeah. back with one tree. The way it was moving around, you could kind of tell with the eyes, the way it was moving around. I think it almost had me. It's not surprising. So I took and I put a trail camera up facing our tent. Mm -hmm. thinking, you know, maybe I can deter him. And, uh, we didn't get nothing real crazy except the clicking. you heard that clicking. I haven't went over the trail cam yet. Oh, you won't get nothing? No, nah, I just more of a If it's the infrared but, type, they see the light. Yep. And they know it. I they just know, they to know deter what the little box is on the side right. of the tree he is. Yep. <laughs> we had one come up missing when we first got him. Yeah, they'll tear them down. When uh, you uh, went back to get the one off the tree, you had to put on. And it came out missing. When we first started getting the outdoor cameras. Yeah, yeah. That was actually the first time here. Was it? 
Yeah, yeah I don't know. My memory's not that good. First but. big foot conference. Oh, yeah. Uh, what I was telling you earlier happened on Saturday evening. Mm -hmm. And uh, it wouldn't have happened that way if it wasn't for my other half going, Oh, go ahead, honey. Go, go ahead. Do your call. Do your, do your, what was it you called it? Constantly. It's what our friends, our friend named it. But Friday night, we were sitting there around the fire, getting eaten up by the mosquitoes. Oh my gosh. You know, it was still warm and the mosquitoes just seemed to be, the grass was tall. And you know how they are, they lay in the grass and then when you step on it, it all of them come up and look like a, a blanket in front of your face. But we were all sitting there talking and uh, it, it kind of started out with, you know, did you see the little one first, or did I see the big one standing there? I have a straight shot of our camper, okay, where I'm sitting. And the mosquitoes were just, ugh, and so it was like, ugh, so I was looking, saw these, what would be about this tall, dark little figures, just kind of moseying around the camper. Then I'd look back and I didn't see anything. Then I was like, okay. So then I looked again and I said, look down there. Look. Look at the camp. There's something down there. <laughs> and he looked. And when I looked down there, uh, I looked at the camper and I didn't see anything. And I kept I kept looking down that way, you know, every little bit I was looking at people when we were talking and stuff like that, and we were just talking about Bigfoot, and um, I kind of looked at one of the other gentlemen that were there, uh, he had his tent set up, and when we came in, he was one of the guys that come down and wanted to help me set up the camper, it only takes me 15 minutes. 15 minutes I'm done. Uh, but it was it was around 10:30, 11 o'clock, and I looked down there, and this is after her seeing the young one running around down there around our camper. There was for more somebody. than one. There was more than one. Yeah, there I was like there a, was at one. least two, maybe three. Okay. Little ones. And I looked down there, and I looked down to his at his tent. He had a tent set up, you know, one of the big dome, big eight, ten people tent set up. I look down there and I see, and there's this huge oak tree. This thing had to be like this big around. I seen something step out, side me. And I kind of, I'm looking, and it stopped. And it just slowly turned up looking at me. And I went, you got, I looked at the guy, the guy that was there. I said, is your wife with you? He said, no. I said, do you have somebody here with you, a female? He said, no. Why? I said, look at your tent. To the right of your tent, that big oak tree. Looked down there and he went, What in the world? Well, as soon as he said something, she just stepped behind the oak tree and walked right back across over into the, the swampy area. And <laughs> he was like, Oh my gosh. So he got up and went down there to see if he could see it, get closer to it. And I never knew. I knew that she was just going to walk down there, go in that swamp area, cut around, and go back to where the kids were at, the little ones were at, pick yeah. them up, and then take them off. And that's what she did. And when we got to hear her, she uh, she did a little chirp or, or a click sound down there and 
all the activity stopped. That was it. And that was it. And it was pretty, you know, more like got to see something that most people don't see. They don't see the juveniles. They don't see the little ones. Yeah. Way about where that big old uh, motorhome is sitting down there. Isn't that about as far as it was to our camper from where we were sitting? Yeah. But you know the area that we was in, it's well, wide open. Paper towel or cold wash No, or I'm something? just having a little issue. <laughs> I'll be okay. Would you let me know I mean, it's anything. exciting when when. See, I used to be very involved when we first started, and then I took sick. And uh, but when he first started we would go on our walks and the first sign was that horrendous smell and it's I would get nausea I'm like something's oh, wrong yeah. we go about three feet away smells gone I've had to help her out of the woods she getting sick ready to pass out I know puking well you know what it is don't you Do you understand what is going on when you smell that smell. Yeah, I just know that it's supposed Well, this to be is after I've been in this for 30 years. you got to remember right, that part. Right, right. Do they have glands to take in control? The big males thing? have glands. Yeah. And there's, there's, it seems to me that I've smelled two different types of smell. Yeah, I have too. Now, one of them is that skunk that's been laying out in the sun for a week and yes. somebody just ran over it and everything. Very nice. Yeah. And uh, then there's one that kind of smells like you, that rotten egg, rotting meat smell. You know, like you somebody took and yeah. poured black powder on the table and went, yeah. <laughs> and that sting. Yeah. And um, the one where, and, and the only times that I've ever smelt the one where it's the dead skunk for a week thing is when I got too close to the big male. And that's when I first started. I'm like, oh, I see it, you know, and take off running through the woods after this thing. <laughs> and after a while, they get tired of you chasing them. Yeah. And they'll stop. And then they'll hit you with that smell. And it's enough to make, and it does make you deathly sick to your stomach. Well, when it happened, uh, somebody, somebody, something, that all of a sudden there was small sticks being thrown at Jason. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And he's, you, like, you what, too close. You know, he's like, what are you doing? I was like, that wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if it was, I would have made it. I would have clocked you. But <laughs> I had to get out of there, and it was, like a death defying smell. Well, there's somehow they can tell. Either by your body chemistry mm -hmm. or by your actions or both. Yeah. You know, they know what they can get by with to get you to leave them alone. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, um, you know, I've been hit with that smell a few times myself. But mostly what I get is the rotten meat, gunpowder going off right. smell. Have you ever smelled? It's almost like a, a person be a, but it's worse. Mm -hmm. It's like mixed with a kind of that skunky, weird. Yeah, it's a big male. He's yeah. just, and, and what I found was, it's usually the big male. It's like, he's not too close to you, but you got inside of his, yeah, his personal right. range. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's what I found over the years. And oh. I've, I've pushed the envelope quite a few times over 30 years. Yeah, when years those sticks started flying, I, I was going to try to stick it out and keep going forward, but well, we had to turn away. Consider yourself lucky. Um, this size tree right here, mm -hmm. not the uh, slick bark one, but uh, the shelly bark behind it, I've had a tree like that pushed over on me. Oh, and been knocked over by the tree top oh, man. I got within 30 foot of it and yeah. at night. Next thing I know, I hear a tree yeah. starting to, to break, and then all of a sudden the top of it hit me and 
knocked me back. Oh my. I've had something like that happen, but it was farther off. I didn't see the tree, but I heard a couple vocalizations, and then you heard that tree just going bang and hitting the ground. Like, yeah, they, they, they were letting you know you were getting too close. Yeah. And it sounded like a female first and then a male. That's by the tones. Yeah. No clue what they said. Well, she was probably telling him, get him away from me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what he does. He coming in too close, get him out of here. Now, they actually told me one time, I don't know if you saw the video or not, leave us alone. And the camera picked it up plain as day. I was going back what I call my secondary entrance. And I guess that's where the, it's kind of like a birthing area. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that. Maybe you know of Fred Kane? Mm -hmm. He watched it and he said it looks to him like I was getting into a birthing area. Mm -hmm. And that's when all of a sudden this voice, it almost sounded, it was like disembodied, not like we're talking now. It sounded like it came out of the speaker. Mm -hmm. It said, leave us. Leave us alone. Leave us. Yeah. And man, I, I just calmly kind of gathered myself and I walked on out. Do you need to go inside? Um, I think so. I was okay. going to wait for the session to end. But um, when we first started, I, I was curious. Mm -hmm. And I, I love exploring. And uh, he got a little upset with me because... I found a shelter area, and I was tired and I laid in it. <laughs> this was here. You didn't. You did well, not. What I did. You laid down. In it was so comfortable. Oh. Was it the dome or was yeah. it the TP? Dome. And it was kind of mashed down in the ground. You know? That you was. Know, that thank you. You understand what type that is around here, right? Oh, I never. This was the beginning when we first yeah, started. This was, this was wrong. Were you? Where were you at when this happened? Uh, what part of the state? West of Columbus, kind of Galloway-ish area, more west of behind the cemetery. My first sight. See, I, I lived, lived in Hilliard, Ohio. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, I lived in the Columbus area for over five, for right at five years. So what this is, I can just take it out of the video. Or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know where that is. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we went back to school. I was excited. And you crawled in the into the shoe. I did done. and I laid down. <laughs> I said, Lucky, what are you doing? Don't do that. I said it's actually comfy because it was formed. They are. And you know, that's when the excitement started and the exploration began and you know, the interest. But you know what type is over there, right? No, I I didn't know anything. Let's see a high grass man here. And uh <laughs> We found a pile of berries. Oh yeah, a bunch of stuff gathered up. And mm -hmm. you can see where they had been sitting right there. Big old butt like marks. Mm -hmm. you know? wow. And there was even poo around the corner. Yeah. And Trace the I was I was first thinking it was dog poo. Uh, until we ran into the other evidence. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, time to go. And it was so <laughs> fresh. It was so freshly made it looked like like we walked right in on it. Probably ran them out. Yeah, I think we did. I think they. They should have been there and relaxing in. for the day. You laid up for the day or something, and y'all. I mean, in. we weren't loud and abrupt, but no, no. but I did have excitement in me. I'm like, what, uh, what, uh, you know, and mm -hmm. yeah. I was right happy. there along the And I didn't mean to disturb them, but you know, it was tempting and it was comfortable. Well, just remember this, anytime you're out, out mm -hmm. always walk with an air of confidence about yourself. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to them coming in close, just treat them like they're second class. Yeah, they are. I, I don't they're have first, fear of, you know, spotting them or, mm -hmm. you know, We've heard some stuff, and I, I lost a lot of interest. Bad to say, after I took you on. So he had been doing it, this research on his own for a while. But in the beginning, it was him and me, and it was exciting. 
Yeah. I mean, the new stuff, the, you know, it's like nobody could have come out there and put that. Why mm -hmm. would somebody? And, but I got to say that, that was comfortable. <laughs> it was like literally they made it fit to where, you know, the, the, where you lay, your back was firm, your, your butt was sunk in, your legs could stretch, and there was even enough leaves for a pillow. <laughs> yeah. And this was, I want to say, September, October, because it was cool enough that I had a jacket on, not a coat, but a jacket, so I was, I was okay laying in the leaves. <laughs> But to find out it was comfortable was, oh my God, ecstatic. I used to, I used to view it that way and get all excited in that way. But now, since I'm pretty much, I mean, these things are net, they're hard net, they're net, they're net they are. Mm -hmm. and so that kind of changed how, man, I don't trust him. There's well, time I've seen a lot of fear in him. Oh, yeah. There are some that are afraid of but there are some that want nothing to do with you and are not afraid of you. Yeah. Um, and everybody gets on to me a lot about, you know, how I react to these big folks. Well, I'm not going to give them the slightest inclination that I'm afraid or that I'm, that, you know, they, the only emotion they're going to get from me is I'm dominant, you're beta, and if you don't like it, I can show you real quick that I am the alpha. You're nothing to me. And that's the way that they yeah. act in their family, you know, in their family units, and in, in their clans. You know, there's sense. an alpha. And any other, there's an alpha male, an alpha female. The alpha female is still interested in that alpha male. Well, I'm a male. He's going to answer to me. And that's the attitude I have with him. And I don't, I don't get excited. I do my level best to never get upset. Don't show any kind of a fear or anything like that. I've had him within 20 feet. And he, the first time they smell, because your body puts off an odor at all times. We have all kinds of pheromones. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they can smell how you're feeling at that point. They can tell when you're happy, sad, mm -hmm. uh, mad, when you're afraid. They they sense all that through smell, just like every other creature in the woods does. And uh, as long as you are confident. Hey, you don't bother me. Go away. You go. You probably go armed, don't you? I normally carry a 40, uh, 40 on my hip, or I got an AR or some such so rifle with me. I don't even have a firearm. That's why sometimes I, I just back out when it's too. See, I never, I don't bite down. Yeah. Even if I, even if I don't have a firearm, because. Uh, and, and here's an instance for you. We were in North Carolina um, two and a half years ago now. Three. It's about the same time. I believe it was about the you were talking about the first trip. Yeah. About two years ago. Yeah. Well, all about two years. Uh, and we went down to help this lady. And she had been having a Bigfoot come to her house. Not just one. Other Bigfoot were coming around her house. Well, this big male was taking interest in her. And she's a blonde. First term <laughs> call it a half when it comes to a Bigfoot. But she's... Girly. A buxom blonde. You know, you know. That's the best way to describe it. Uh, describe her. Uh, she's a very pretty lady. Uh, she's a, and it's on my channel, the Southern Belle. 
And I told them, well, go grab us something to eat so we can have dinner. Well, I had ulterior motives. If I'd have told her my ulterior motives, I wouldn't have been doing that. I'd have been driving the truck because she'd have made me go. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to check out behind her house. You know, find out where they were staying and find out why they were coming, why this Bigfoot was always coming to her house yeah. every night or every other night, usually three, four times a week. And it was standing outside her window. Slapping on her house. It would slap the house to get her attention, get her to do something. And she started getting to the point by dark, she wouldn't go in her kitchen. She wouldn't even go into her bathroom. It started getting that bad, and that's why I went down. And uh, went down and did an investigation behind her house, started looking around, and I found tree bows and tree breaks, and I found a couple of X's back there. Yeah. And I'm going, mm, okay. Now what? You know, what, what am I going to have to do? I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to have to do to get this Bigfoot to back off from her and I circled around and came past this really dense thick wooded brushy area and when I walked past it I got maybe 50 or 60 yards from it and I hear Ugh. I started turning around and then I heard crash, crash, crash. This probably seven foot tall female come out on all fours. Looked like the spider. You know, everybody talks about that. It's I heard about board. it. Yeah. Looked like a spider coming at you. And I turn around and all I have on my hip was a machete because I had to cut my way through the bamboo around her house. Yeah. And she come out there and I rushed out and put my hand on that machete. And she came up probably 30, maybe the most 40 yards from me and stopped. This is open woods. And she came out of that brush running right straight at me and I turned and I faced her. And I stood as tall as I could and I said, you better stop because otherwise you're not going home. I'll go home, but you ain't. She stopped. She just looked at me and, and kind of rocked back and forth on her front legs. I heard of that. On her front arms, not her, not her legs, but she was rocking back and forth. You know, you can see her arms moving because she was rocking. And she never stood up. And finally I looked there and I said, you need to go home now or it's not going to be very pretty. One of us is going to be hurt badly and probably die. And the other one's not, and the other one's not going to have any trouble whatsoever walking out of here. And she, oh, and backed up probably 10, 15 feet, turned around, and just walked out on the four legs. And I knew she was a female because she had, you know, they weren't huge breasts, but she had breasts. So it tells me she had probably had a young one there in that brush, and I think it got too close to their nursery. Yeah. And that's why she charged out there. But you can talk to them when they do that, and most of the time they'll stop. They'll stop and look at you funny, or you know, they'll walk back and forth, and they'll stop their charge. The only problem is is when they don't stop the charge, and you ain't got a gun, you're in a world of hurt. And usually that's the big males that will do that. The females, they'll stop. So that's why I tell everybody, when you go out Bigfoot, you always want to carry a sidearm that's big enough to stop one. And if you take a 380 out there, there'll be somebody calling and saying, hey, you remember this guy? Yeah. Well, we can't find him. And I don't want to hear that. Yeah, I lost, I lost my mentor to these creatures. They killed him. Remember that video? Yeah. And 
we still have not found one of his rings. Nothing. The only thing cage. I found was his hat. Yeah, I bet up in that cage somewhere, huh? Well, that cave no longer has an opening. Oh, yeah? The cave no longer has an opening. So if they were in it, they probably suffocated. Yeah. And that type of death, in my opinion, after taking him, they got one. To this day, I still get angry over it. It still affects me a lot. And uh, I, to this day, I wish I still had him here. He'd be up in his 80s right now, but he uh, definitely helped me a lot. So, I caution everybody when you go out, make sure you carry a firearm. Heck, even your cell phone can look like a firearm when it gets dark. Yeah. Always keep a knife and a machete. Cell phones over there. Yeah. Something at least. I've never been blunt charged or none of that. Count self luck. Yeah. I had branches thrown at me, man. I had one, it just went whew, crazy. My hat and everything, <laughs> man. Wow. Yeah. You hear the turkeys? I thought I heard something. Yeah. That's because I ended up, once I went over the video real well, because mm -hmm. when that happened, I knew you need to go over that video and see yeah. what you caught. There was little ones up in the brush. Yeah. I got too close. Now, the little ones will throw little sticks at you and they'll try to hit you with rocks. Yeah, it's probably a branch, maybe that long. That, that thick, I guess, or something like that. Well, yeah, remember, hurt. they have the strength of a grown man. Oh, yeah. When they're little. But when they get to that seven, eight, nine foot stage, they make us look like we're <laughs> the weakest thing well, I've seen what they do to the trees, so I can imagine. I wouldn't want to tangle with one. Do you want to uh, take a break for a second? Yeah. Get her yeah. inside. Yeah. I'm sorry. I just. That's okay, baby. Mm. Hey, we got room inside. <laughs>